quite normal that meditation is sort of normal so you can your mind is open to different things and setting up for things like that? Uh, so the question was, um, uh, you've heard that um, sometimes in meditation the mind can be open to demons' influence. No. Uh, well, let me put it this way. The only place I've heard this is from uh, like Christian fundamentalists who want to scare people away from meditation. Um, I think... Well, and there's another place that I heard this. I went to um, an interfaith program up in the mountains. This was here in the Los Angeles area a few years ago. And it was some Buddhist from our university, University of the West, and uh, some students and teachers from a, a, a Christian school. And they brought in um, a man who teaches something called Christian centering prayer, which is a form of Christian meditation. It was started by a Trappist monk, a Catholic monk, uh, and if I remember the story correctly, his monastery, his Catholic monastery, wasn't far from a Zen center. And so people were always stopping by the Catholic monastery and knocking on the door and saying, where's the, where's the Buddhist place? So he's like, what is this? People like meditation. What's this about? And he, if I remember this correctly, he developed this, uh, this kind of Christian centering prayer. And uh, the technique was to um, sit and then repeat a word or phrase to yourself, um, like a mantra, basically. And one he said that was very popular was to say, Abba, Abba, Abba. I think it's Abba. Abba is the old Aramaic work, word for father, which is apparently the word that Jesus used when talking about God. He would say, Abba. I think that's the word. I can't remember now. Uh, so, so this man who was teaching it, long story short, this man who was teaching it said uh, that he was doing this uh, centering prayer training sometimes, and I think he said it was a nun, maybe a Catholic nun, who said to him afterwards, well, now I know I have to be very careful and watch my mind or the devil will get in. And what she was referring to was her own crazy thoughts. So that might be another place where that comes from. People who've tried meditation, then they kind of see some of the crazy thoughts that come up, and we all have crazy thoughts, right? And they think that's demon influence from outside, and so they say meditation is dangerous. But no, no. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it. I don't think I would get to the high level. Of How about uh, the Buddha only teach one method of meditation, or do they teach the many ones that they discuss? Because I read one place that he taught like the Vipassana. Uh -huh. So do you ta teach other methods, or do you prefer a certain method, or was that come out of the people? OK. Uh, so the question again is, did the Buddha teach all these different kinds of meditation that I described, or did he teach one, one kind of meditation? Um, well, it depends on who you talk to. Uh, so the Tibetans, who do these elaborate visualizations, will say that the Buddha taught this kind of meditation, but secretly. Other people say, no, these techniques of meditation arose later. They're looking at like the archaeological evidence and historical texts and things like that. And they're saying, no, this kind of stuff arose later. Um, but when we look at what are widely recognized as some of the earliest Buddhist texts, n none of the Buddhist teachings were written down in his lifetime. Same thing with Jesus. They weren't written down in his lifetime. They, they started writing them down, I think, a few hundred years later. So originally, it was an or a completely oral tradition. But if we look at some of the earliest texts, the Buddha t did teach different kinds of meditation. Uh, in some cases, to overcome attachment uh, to the body, he had some of his monks and nuns meditating on corpses. They might even go to um, what we would call a charnel ground, a place where um, dead bodies were left out for the buzzards to feed on as like a, like a final offering. I think we can think of it that way. And so they would sit and maybe look and watch bodies in different state of, of rotting as part of their meditation, or they would meditate on their own bodies rotting to give up attachment to their own bodies. But then they would balance this with a meditation, uh, one I just heard described recently by one of my professors at school. They would meditate upon their skeleton glowing with light, this sort of wonderfulness of the body, uh, you know, to counteract that. Uh, because what happened in the Buddha's day was there was a monk who was meditating on either his own decaying body or, or another decaying body, 
And um, he got so depressed and saying, oh, this body is so disgusting, it's so disgusting, that he ended up committing suicide. So then the Buddha said, okay, well, let's balance this out. Uh, and then uh, we'll talk about this more later when we talk about the Eightfold Path. But in the Eightfold Path, there's something called right concentration. And specifically what the Buddha was talking about is the four jhanas. And these are four different kinds of uh, meditation. Uh, and among them is like meditation on bliss, cultivating a sense of bliss and really strong happiness. The idea there was um, if you can experience this incredible bliss and happiness in meditation, then it will be easier to let go of chasing after sensual pleasures, pleasure through food, pleasure through whatever, right? Uh, so these are, so the Buddha, teach, the Buddha did teach different kinds of meditation. Yes, very good questions. Yeah. So other questions? Okay. Um, well, uh, I think what I'll do is give the specific instructions for sitting in meditation, and we have time today. Um, so we will go ahead and do two short meditations with the walking meditation in between, okay? Uh, so to sit in meditation, first of all, um, if it's really, really uncomfortable, you're welcome. Do we have chairs back here right now? In the future, uh, maybe we'll, we'll leave some chairs out and back. So if it's really uncomfortable, uh, you can fold out a chair and sit in a chair. But if we're going to sit down here on these, these meditation benches, the way I fold my legs is like this. So I've got my right foot on my left calf. And then my left foot is underneath. It's like the base underneath. Okay? Uh, and you'll, the more you sit, the more flexibility you'll develop. Uh, some people can sit in full lotus, um, which is where you have one foot up on each thigh, right? But this is fine. This is a, a stable position to sit in. So then we're sitting on the edge of the seat. The best way is to sit kind of on the edge of the seat. It helps you roll your hips forward and sit up straight. So you've got a curve in your back still, but you're sitting up straight. We don't want to sit like this when we meditate. You'll fall over, especially if you're sleepy, and it's bad for your back. And uh, if the muscles aren't developed for you to sit up like this, the more you sit, the more developed they'll be. Okay. Uh, then as for uh, our, uh, the rest of our posture, our shoulders are back a little bit. And this again helps with the upright posture. Our head is forward. We don't drop our heads down. But the head is forward. We let our eyes, our gaze fall down in front of us. And we're not focusing at a point on the ground. We're just, um, we're letting the eyes go a little out of focus. If you wear glasses, it's good to take off your glasses during meditation. So we're letting our, our gaze rest in front of us a little bit. And then for our hands, uh, for your hands, you can just put them on your knees like this or turn them over like this if you like. You can just fold them in front of you. Although for myself, I find that sometimes folding my hands in front of me when I'm sitting like this sort of pulls me forward a little bit. So you can fold your hands in front of you, or you can put your hands together like this, flat with your thumbs touching. And then you can rest it around you know, your belly button or a little bit lower. And this is a good position to hold your hands because if you're pressing your thumbs together hard, then you're sort of grinding the meditation. You're pushing too hard. And if your thumbs keep pulling apart, if you can't keep them together just nicely and quietly, if they keep pulling apart, then maybe you're too high strung. Your mind is too tight or too taut. Okay. Then the mouth is closed. And actually, this is a detail, uh, you don't need to worry about this too much, but your tongue uh, should be resting on the roof of your mouth. And so we're breathing in and out through the nose. 
And we're not breathing from the chest. We're breathing from below here, from our belly, right? In and out. And then, as I've, as I've said, the mind will wander. Bring it back. Uh, there was a Tibetan Lama who was teaching in, um, in Nepal when I was there, and he said something really wonderful. He said, people worry about getting lost in their meditation, you know, their mind wandering, and they just sort of space out, and then the bell rings, and they're done. But if you notice your mind wandering, if you notice that you're lost, in that moment, you're no longer lost. So the mind will wander. Just bring it back. That's the practice. Keep bringing the mind back. Keep bringing the mind back and just try to keep your focus present here. Okay. And again, to help with this, you can focus on the sensation of the breath at the tip of your nostrils, coming and going, coming and going. Okay. So again, we'll do this meditation for about 15 minutes, and then we'll all get up, and we'll do uh, just one round walking meditation, and then we'll come back to our seats and we'll do another 15 minutes of, medi uh, of sitting meditation. And when you're walking, we're doing the same thing. Just try to keep your focus here in the present. If your mind wanders, bring it back. It's also good rest for your legs. Okay.
So thank you everyone uh, for attending. Um, again, next week um, I'll start with the Four Noble Truths. Uh, and as always, you're welcome to, to bring your questions. Uh, so let's stand up and we'll do this very last prayer, the Offering Merit Prayer in the back of the prayer book. I wish that this merit would all be extended to everyone.